of how racism works is that we view white people's pain as more important than black people's pain. No, th that's, right? that's not true at all. Um, you view us um, as thinking that our problems are more important and then we think that you think that your problems are more important. And that's the problem that we have. I'm not denying and that there are hectic problems in this country that need to be addressed. But we can also not deny the fact that very many of these problems are service delivery, maintenance problems due to carded deployment, affirmative action. Because people have been put into positions that they are not qualified to do and the country exactly. is falling yeah, apart. Point. Yes, absolutely. We started this conversation with regards to the rainbow nation. You, there cannot be a rainbow if we do not embrace the fact that we are several different cultures, we speak different languages, we have different traditions, and that was the plan, is for each of those to be preserved so that together it will be a really nice picture. But it all just became one big grey mess and majority takes everything. And you cannot deny that. You cannot deny the fact that tribalism is alive and well, and I actually think it's a good thing. I mean, Zulu people have, they own 37% of Natal in the Ingonyama Trust, and nobody knows that the Zulus have an entire homeland in the brand new South Africa. But let them have it if they want, but then give it to us as well. You agree. I want to stay with I agree very much with what she's saying. Um, I think it's about owning the truth of your own story with all of its complexity. So for me, as, as again, as an educated middle-class woman, I know that when I walk into spaces, I, I, I carry a certain currency that is not carried by my brother who can't pee in a toilet that I peed in when I went to Vits, exactly. you know? Exactly. But at the same time, I also acknowledge that when I do walk into spaces, for example, going into very poor disenfranchised communities, I also have to acknowledge that the dysfunction that I see that exists in those communities is part of my historical baggage. I carry it within me. It's in my family, it's in my heart, it's in my choices. And what is worrisome is seeing people who own so much power in terms of land, in terms of resources, in terms of people you employ, in terms of the language that, you, that you've taken from these people People and used to create a nation. You own so much power, but do you concede that? Do you acknowledge that? Do you own that? If, if you own a little bit of that, it would be easy to come to the table with you. It would be easy to acknowledge death is death, pain is pain. I mean, there were 350 years of conscription in this country. It's only one generation of, Af of, of white men who didn't go into the military. How much pain exists in white families? I'd be willing to, I'd be willing to hear that more than I'm willing to hear that your pain is your pain only. Only because everybody in this room is carrying pain. But I don't, I don't believe the debate from our side. Twenty years into this democracy, the debate from our side has never been to negate your pain, nor has it ever been about saying that we want back to where we came from. White people voted for this democracy. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No. No, they didn't, Sissy. No, we, they didn't. Yes. A handful, in, a handful, in, in a handful. We, did any of did you vote ANC in 1994? I'm not talking about you. the ANC. Please listen. In 1992, white people had a referendum to decide whether they're going to allow the vote, and we gave the vote because we thought that what was happening was wrong. It wasn't yours to give. Do you acknowledge that? It was not your country to take in the first place. But we acknowledge the fact that you are here. We acknowledge that you are here. It wasn't your country to take. Is it your country? It's all of our countries. But it's acknowledge country. it's all of ours. 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 It's not the place. This is not the place. Sir? It's my country. Sir? This is not the place. It's everyone's country. Everybody in this parade are saying we don't belong here. Okay, no Senate? one can hear you at What this I'm point. saying is that I don't think the problem is with people on the ground, the, even the people sitting here. People who govern and politicians are determining the success of what is happening on the ground. Right. We have rhetoric where people go on stages and say the colonists must go and, the, and we stole the land and we stole the mines. The, the Brits took the mines. Buddha never had mines. And, and we can't keep on having that rhetoric and move forward. Every time I switch on a television or I put on a radio and Julius Malema says that we don't belong here and what is happening? <laughs> 
it's a problem. You cannot preach reconciliation to one segment of the country and preach empowerment to the other segment. All right. There's a vast, there's a vast difference between and I agree with you. There's a vast difference between rhetoric that's used to manipulate the population yes. and sway people and the truth. Ne? And I would be interested in hearing how white people process the emotional baggage of what their ancestors did. I would be interested in trying to understand what it did to white families. How much silence did white people have to cope with? How did white people build a shield around themselves to be able to deal with the system in which whiteness operated all these years? That's an emotional conversation. That's a delicate conversation. I'd be willing to do the work of trying to unravel that. Because right now, as a black person, I'm trying to do the work of unraveling my own baggage, my own historical baggage. I think when white people start to do that work, then we'll start to begin the project of trying to understand how all of us belong to this place. But you can't erase history. We can't pretend the violence didn't happen. We can't pretend colonialism didn't happen. We can't pretend people weren't slaves. We can't pretend our people are not poor. It happened. It happened. I'd be willing to hear white people say, you know what, it was cuck trying to pretend that this situation was normal. But I'm not hearing white people do that work. All right. What all right. South Africa when is a fractured mirror a paradox of schizophrenic selves who don't talk to one another, who coexist together but don't live with each other. And this is the time when you can become the greatest substance of your dreams unless you live in a shack and don't speak English and don't know what this poem means. Tell me how it's possible for people who walk on gold to not know how to read. South Africa is an old-fashioned mutt who knows how to sing and knows even better how to cuss, who knows how to pray when she's about to run out of luck, who knows how to laugh really hard when the tears have run her into a rut, who knows that race is a farce because when the lights are off, everybody's f***ed. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of... Anger, there's a lot of, I don't, I don't hear hope yet. I don't know about you, but I don't hear hope yet. I hear it. I hear it, just us being here, having this conversation together, getting to a space that we need to get to as a nation, it will take a very long time. It's not child's work. For me to sit and listen to Sunet, listen to Pierre, listen to Sisonke, and to Lebo, and hear the various voices and digest the message that comes from them. I feel pained, I, I feel their pain. But at the same time, I feel there's hope because we're talking about it. We put a plaster on a gunshot wound in this country. That's what we did. And that needs to stop. We need to, we need to talk to each other and then come to a space of understanding. You're with the EFF. Yes, I am with the EFF. Explain that to me. Well, I explain in a simple fashion that <clears throat> in this country we've got more than 70% of the nation that's living in utter poverty. And if you go into the townships and, and especially in the squatter camps and you see how our children are living, we're talking about kids. We're not talking about black, white, color. We're talking about kids. So when I look at economic freedom fighters, we are looking at changes in this country to bring it into a social system where there will be no class, where the state can take control and we can live in a society where everybody can be brought up to the same level. The, the thing of, of the Rainbow Nation that did not work, yeah. reconciliation can only work if we both reconcile. You cannot have Nelson Mandela giving forgiveness for a racist group of people that oppressed black people in the apartheid era and say, let us forgive them. They don't come forward and say, yes, we accept your forgiveness, let's reconcile with each other. They don't do that. We still have people in the audience here. We still have people in the audience here, like a gentleman there, when, when, when she was talking about uh, the black people being uh, more educated and can actually uh, contest for a position. I had a comment says, yeah, let's kill them. Mm -hmm. It's those comments that makes people to be killed on farms also. Because when you undermine a black person in this country longer, they are going to kill you. I'm Myrtle Vetpui, and I'm from the South African Domestic Workers Union. It's not about color. It's not about whether I'm a colored 
It's whether I'm a human being. Yeah. And I think we need to do that. Do you know the pain of a domestic worker? Mm. Do you know what it is to be isolated in the backyard of employers? To sit there when the employer go out with their beautiful cars and I remain in the backyard, I was there in the past eight years. Mm. But one man came out and he forgave. And that time, when I was in the struggle, I did not say I was a colored. Yeah. I did not say Mandela is black. We were fighting for freedom. <laughs> that is what we were doing. That's, I, did, I, did, I did not classify myself as a colored. And when Comrade Mandela came out, he said there's black and there's white. And since that day, I walked that path. I am black. And I am, and I am proud of it. If we want to free ourselves, we must free ourselves from this color thing. We're not going to become free because we are better. We are oppressed even in our working place. Uh, our employers don't recognize us. We raise the children. Yeah. But you find that at the end, you dismiss, you are stealing, you, my paint is missing, my sugar is missing. <laughs> There's a, 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 a certain amount of people which wants to create a nation of unity. And then there's us, the Boers. We don't take part in this. And we're not going to. And we're not going to go away. And we're the rightful owners of this land. <laughs> so, uh, well, so that doesn't mean we doesn't see the sunshine over other people. Okay, if you go back in history, you would actually see that the Boers have negotiated with the tribal chiefs and the kings, and we, we have, we have uh, see them as equal, and we have uh, give them their, their uh, peace. Okay? Uh, now, Megaron, we can hear you. If we want to uh, share one country, we must first accept the realities. Help me understand something. If we're going to live in the same country, but you don't want unity, how do we do it? We, we never wanted unity. No, 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 I, I, I accept what you're saying. Okay. I accept that, that's what you said. Yes. What I'm saying is, then how do we live in one country? Oh, that's very easy, okay? We can uh, li live in this country happily if we have proper borders. So if, if the Boers have their land, mm -hmm. and the Tswanas have their land, and the Zulus have their land, we do not want to mix leave Jobik for the cosmopolitans and all this uh, type uh -huh. like, like... Sounds like a party, though. <laughs> yeah, properly, yes. Okay. All right. Then, Let me hear what my panelists have to say. Mr. Langa? <laughs> Sit down. Yes, only these two. This is intimidation. Part of